Hello everyone, today we're going to discuss Pompeian Graffiti, the writings found on the walls of Pompeii, written by everyday Pompeians. This is a particularly interesting area of study because it's one of the few sources of ancient writing that we have along with epigraphy. So how could people send messages in the ancient world? There's no internet, no Twitter, Facebook, email. There isn't even regular mail, like where you put a stamp on something and mail it to someone else. That doesn't exist in the ancient world. Also remember there's no telephone, no text messaging. The only way to send messages in Pompeii is to send a person with your message from one person to another. This was often a job given to slaves um, to, to run messages for people um, or to, to other people in your household. But what if you wanted your message to reach a large group of people? Well, then you need something a little more equivalent to today's billboard or advertising messages on the sides of bus shelters and, uh, and posters and things like that. This is where graffiti comes in. This is not the kind of graffiti that we see today spray painted on fences or on the sides of buildings. This is not an illegal, um, covert, you know, vandalism that people are doing in Pompeii. This is billboards. This is advertising and messaging. Um, so these are things that people could paint on the walls, could write their message or hire someone, as we see in our stories in stage 11, to write their message and get that across to many people. It was not illegal, it was not frowned on, it's something that lots of people did in their everyday life and the way that lots of people learned about things going on in Pompeii. So the walls around Pompeii look something like this. You can see the base of the wall is red and the upper portion of the wall was whitewashed with a white paint and then red messages, red letters, were painted onto that. You can see that in just this small picture, there are several different messages in different sizes of writing, um, giving, giving different information to passers-by. Every few weeks or months, we don't really know the time frame, these walls would be re-whitewashed to provide a blank canvas for messages to go up once again. Graffiti was the best way to send a message or to advertise by writing on the walls. As I mentioned before, this was very common and very acceptable, not like the vandalism graffiti that we see today. We're going to look at many different types of graffiti that the Pompeians wrote on their walls. Let's start with political. Political graffiti is usually advertising people for election. Think about nowadays when there's an election coming up in your town or city or country. There are signs that people put in their lawns, usually showing which candidate they support or which political party they support. These are those same kind of messages that people might write on their own wall, on the side of their house or shop, or on other public city walls, showing that they support different candidates. You may notice that one of these messages features the name Halconium, or in the nominative Halconius, one of the uh, politicians that you meet in our stories. He is based off of this uh, graffiti in Pompeii. So have a look at this first piece of graffiti, Satrium Quink OVF. Now you may notice that these don't really seem like full Latin words, and that's because there are many short forms and abbreviations that the Pompeians and other Romans used to get their message across. Think about uh, text shorthands and abbreviations uh, like LOL or, or other things like that. Everyone sort of knows what they mean, and when you see it, you are instantly keyed into that message. You know what's going on. OVF is the same way for Pompeian political graffiti. It stands for Oro Wobis Faciatus, which best translates as I ask that you elect. So this graffiti and others like it are asking that you elect whoever is named in the graffiti, in this case, Satrius. Let's have a look at this graffiti. Again, we're not seeing full words here. We're seeing some different short forms. So let's expand out those short forms. It would look a little bit like this when we turn those short form words into full words. M was an abbreviation for the first name Marcus, or sometimes the first name Marius. There were so few Roman first names that, uh, that typically they could be abbreviated by just a letter. In fact, there were only about 10 or 12 commonly used uh, male first names. 
AED is short for ADIL, which is uh, one of the political offices up for election in Pompeii. And then we see um, Faciatus Oro Vos again expanded out a little bit here from OVF, but I ask that you elect. So this inscription says, I ask that you elect Marcus Marius as Adile. Here's another one a little bit longer. Notice again, we can see lots of similarities to the last inscription. We see AED, again symbolizing Adile, and OV, FAC, our favorite uh, abbreviation, I ask that you elect. If we expand out this inscription, it looks a little bit like this. I've highlighted the names of people in this inscription in bold so that you can see which parts are our names and which parts we're going to try to translate. The beginning is quite straightforward and what we've seen in the previous uh, inscriptions. I ask that you elect Marcus Carinius Vatia as Adile. The next sentence you could probably translate yourself. Fabius Eupor Rogat. I hope that you recognize the word Rogat as asks. So the next sentence says, Fabius Eupor asks, now we know who is writing this message or who commissioned this message um, that you should elect Marcus. And the last sentence, et scribit infantio. And infantio writes it as in this message. So Fabius Eupor is the person who commissioned this inscription and infantio is probably the name of the sign writer who actually did the writing. So we've got a little bit of extra advertising here for him. This one again is a little bit longer. Let's expand out this inscription. We see AED and OVF as we have before. It looks a little bit like this. And again, I have uh, taken the liberty of bolding people's names. I apologize for the small typo in this slide. I've added an extra N into Wikini, so it should be in the last line, V-I-C-I-N-I. -I. Um, there's an extra N in there, my apologies. The first section of this uh, inscription is very similar to the ones we've seen before. I ask that you elect Atius Vetius Firmus as Adile, Dignus Est. Dignus is an adjective describing Atius, and it means worthy. So we can translate this as, I ask that you elect Atius as Adile, he is worthy. And then the last sentence mentions who is doing the asking, Capresia et Wikini and her neighbors. Capresia and her neighbors ask that you elect him. Let's look at one last political inscription. If we expand this one out, you can see the person up for election here is Gaius Julius Polyb Polybius, excuse me, up again for Adile. But what about this last sentence, panem bonum fert? Panem is the word for bread. Bonum, I think you can, you think you should know, is good. And fert means uh, brings. So this inscription, I ask that you elect Gaius as Adile. He brings good bread. This is another way that politicians often convinced voters to vote for them by offering rewards such as bread. Um, it was also part of politicians' duties to provide bread and circuses, bread and entertainment for the masses in their city. So Gaius not only does that, he provides good bread. Another type of inscription that we see in Pompeii are romantic inscriptions. Here's one where I've glossed some of the unfamiliar vocabulary for you. Suspirium means crush or perhaps heartthrob. Puellarum, of the girls, you see puella there. Threx is a type of gladiator, a Thracian, and then Kelidris is someone's name. So this romantic inscription reads, Kelidris the Thracian is all the girl's heartthrob or all the girl's crush. Here's another fun one, Lucius Pinxit. This is a verb you should recognize all the way back from the beginning of our course. It means painted, and we can add the word this in English. So Lucius painted this. It's a, sort of the equivalent of I was here, signing your name to your own graffiti. Here's one that I always enjoy, Labyrinthus Hic Habitat Minotaurus. 
Minotaurus is someone that we met in our last translation story, Theseus and the Minotaur. It is a monster with a half, uh, half bull and half man. And it lives in the labyrinth or the maze, which is what this inscription says. The Minotaur lives in this labyrinth. Sometimes graffiti also took the form of pictures. In this piece of graffiti, we see two fighting gladiators with their names written over top and perhaps the number of wins uh, scratched in Roman numerals underneath their name, especially of the second gladiator, Felix, there. Uh, you can see that he was a very successful gladiator. So as you can see from these examples of Pompeian graffiti, these messages took all kinds of different forms, from fun and interesting to romantic to political. These messages are the voices of ancient Pompeians that we can see now in our everyday life, and, uh, and relate to on a more personal level. Thank you.